to have you with us on this mothering Sunday supplement. And I trust with our children back at school this week, things have gone well for you. If you happen to be new or visiting us for the very first time, can I extend a special warm welcome to you? Jane is going to start us by giving us our reading from the book of Psalms. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I made my, make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. For darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Good morning, church. It's wonderful to be with you again. And happy Mother's Day. Matthew, let me pick my own verses for today, uh, which feels like a very special treat indeed. And I picked Psalm 139. Um, it's where I'm spending a lot of time at the moment, but I also felt that God had something to share with us from it. This is not just for mothers, but it is with a heart. For those of us in our community who have a mothering role. So, all I could think to share with you today is that God sees you. You. Just as you are. God sees you. And he knows you. I'm going to read verses one to six again. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my laying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. So what did I feel God whispering to us today? For the mothers among us who have navigated lockdown, homeschool, their own mental health, family demands, and have felt alone in it all, God sees you. For the ones who have felt seen and known by friends this year, God sees and knows you too. And for the ones who have not, God knows you. God sees you. For the children and young people who have dealt with all this strangeness so well, and for the ones who have struggled, 
God sees you. God knows you. For the single parents, the singles, the grandparents, cut off from family and friends, perhaps wondering if the world has forgotten about you or fearing that you might be left behind as life opens back up again. God sees you and he knows you. God sees when we lose our temper and he loves us. That's verse four. He sees when we don't know how to parent that child or navigate that relationship and he guides us. That's verse 10. He sees when we feel separated from him and he reminds us that nothing ever could take us beyond the reach of his presence. That's verse 7. He sees when the world feels dark and he knows how to help us find our way through. That's verse 12. He knows you intimately and is acquainted with all the inner workings of your heart. He made it. That's verse 15. He created you purposefully. He took care over crafting you. He knows you well. That's verse 13. He knows who and why and what he made you for. And he placed you here, now, on purpose. That's verse 16. And God longs for us to know him this well too. David ends this psalm by asking God in verses 23 and 24 to continue the work he's been doing in David's heart and life. But how does that happen? How do we get vulnerable and open enough for God to search us and know us and change us and lead us? It starts with knowing how seen and known and loved we are by God. Then we can be vulnerable and we can pray, God search me and know me and lead me in the way everlasting. God, with a mother's heart, you gather us as your children. You comfort and hold us in your warm embrace. When we are hurt, your arms enfold us. When we are afraid, your wings protect us. When we are hungry, you feed us with the bread of life. God, with a mother's heart, your love surrounds and supports us in good times and tough, in the midst of joy and pain, always and everywhere. You will never leave nor abandon us. God eternal and loving one, God with a mother's heart, we thank you for this day, for being part of your family. There was a moment when the lights went out, when death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a the cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished but not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens roared
There was a moment when the sky lit up A flash of light breaking through When all was lost he crossed eternity The king of life was on the moon For in a dark cold tomb Where our Lord was laid one miraculous breath would forever change doing well. I'm just going to share a few things about my first teaching placement at P. Samson John Primary School. And so I've just completed my second week of placement and I've really enjoyed it, uh, although it has been quite tiring at times. Uh, so we've had around 15 to 20 children in our class at the moment and when schools reopen on the 8th of March we'll have 23 children. So it hasn't been too different to uh, sort of a normal class size. And so over the past two weeks, I've been listening to children reading on like a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, I've also been reading a few uh, books and stories to the class. And I've also just been uh, assisting children with their schoolwork. Um, and over the next four weeks, I'm going to be planning and delivering a few like small group guided reading lessons. And also I think I'm delivering a small group maths lesson. Uh, which I'm really looking forward to because it's given me a chance to put all the theory and all the uh, literature from our course actually into practice. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hi friends, across the country there are hundreds of churches with small handfuls of young people scattered between them. In 2015, Movement was born with a vision to bring those isolated young people together to meet with God in a dynamic environment with contemporary worship and Bible-based teaching that is practical, relevant and useful. My overall experience of movement has been really good. I've been coming to the events for the last two years now and it's always just been such a safe space and I know that whatever kind of week I've had, whether it's been great, whether it's been awful, it's always tonight's movement so it's going to be good. The talks are amazing, the worship is incredible, so yeah, my experience of movement has been great. 
for us as a small rural church. It's been the part of our programming on which everything else has hung because the young people just love coming to Movement. Over the last five years, Movement has grown from a single worship night to now meeting over 20 times a year in many different locations, including Wells Cathedral, where we brought 500 young people together to worship God. Movement now engages over 1,400 young people a year across the Southwest. Many of those making first time commitments saying yes to following Jesus at our gatherings. If you don't know Jesus, this Jesus I'm talking about, you can know him tonight. Should we lift up a shout of praise to the name of King Jesus? As well as worship nights, Movement has hosted a number of different equipping events like our conference days, where we've seen hundreds of young people equipped to step out in God's calling for their lives. We've created new resources for young people and youth leaders to use in whatever setting they are in. I really enjoyed the podcast series that Movement did. It was really interesting to kind of hear in a less formal way, like what it's actually like being Christian kind of in the wider world and how they take God with them on everything they do. We've given young people the opportunity to be empowered and to continue to grow in their giftings through serving on our teams or being part of our discipleship year. One of the main things I've got out of the Movement Discipleship Year um, is a whole load of more confidence. The support that I get in the Movement team and actually the opportunities that we get as well through the discipleship team have worked really nicely to build my confidence levels and actually open my eyes to some of the things that I'm actually really able to do that I didn't think I was at the beginning of the year. Movement have played a massive part in my story. Um, they were the first kind of group to take a real chance on me. Um, I was this rogue musician that got a calling from God into worship ministry and uh, Rich and the team took me in, poured love into me and said, come lead worship for us. And uh, it's really laid the foundation of my worship ministry today, which is uh, leading worship full time for St. Philip's Church. In the spring of 2020, we launched Movement Online, a new online resource aimed initially at helping young people in their journey with God as the nation went through lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This is now a ministry tool that we are fully committed to developing in order to continue to reach young people with the message of Jesus. Movement Online has been a brilliant source of wisdom for my lockdown life and know other people's as well. The teachings have been relatable and easy to connect with and it's been guiding not just only me but my family as well throughout the difficult time of being distant from other people is like a sense of community. Friends, we know this is still only the beginning of the movement story and that God still has so much more in store for us. We believe God is calling us to continue to engage, equip and empower youth and young adults to be all that he is calling them to be. So join us in thanking him for all he has done. being with us. It's always a delight to spend time with you. Please do join us again next week when we'll be returning to our sermon series to consider a life lesson from the book of Numbers.